Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to talk about a cease and desist notice that was received by Nvidius. Nvidius is a privacy focused, open source, GPL3 licensed YouTube front end that allows you to view YouTube videos while stripping away the advertisements, but more importantly, stripping away the trackers. According to who tracks me, there's approximately seven different trackers on every single YouTube page, which is really just kind of, yeah. um, this is, something that many people wish to avoid. And this client allows you to do that. In some of my recent videos, I've gone over why you should never feel bad for blocking ads and over here, why I will never pay for YouTube premium ever again. In the thumbnail of that video, I said piracy is completely justified. The TLDR of this 10 minute long video is that YouTube has a system that treats people that pay for YouTube Red, like me, for seven years, worse than people who have never paid for it at all, who simply choose to pirate. I, when I take road trips, usually have two smartphones on me. One I use for live streaming my entire drive, kind of like a live dash cam, and the other phone I use for playing podcasts in the car so that I can listen to something if I'm on a 27 hour long road trip. And as a result of this, I only have one SIM card, so only one of my phones will be online. What I'll do is I'll have my secondary phone that has a couple of videos downloaded, since my first phone will be doing the live stream, and also my first phone is almost always out of storage, so I can't fit anything anyway, and I will play it on the road trip. Since I had pre-planned my road trip about about four days in advance, these videos were sitting on a phone that was offline for four days. So when I went to play the video, imagine my shock when it said the downloaded video I had downloaded won't play unless I connect to the internet. At this point, I learned that had I actually just pirated these videos and used YouTube Downloader, I would have actually had a better experience for free than I did paying $10 a month. So at this point, I decided, okay, up yours, I'm never giving you money again, in spite of the fact that I've been paying for the premium version of your platform for seven years. So there's genuinely no love lost for YouTube in that instance. I have zero sympathy whatsoever when you give me a worse experience for paying than when I pirate. I do not like feeling like a simp, and if you make me feel like a simp, I will remember. So I donate to content creators, I donate to the people that I listen to on a regular basis who provide me with value, and I suggest that you donate directly to content creators while using an ad blocker if you find their content valuable as well. That content creator is not even gonna make a dollar off of you if you listen to every video they do over the course of two or three years. So they're gonna be better off if you ad block and donate anyway, and it also encourages getting rid of the tracking and spying experience. Now, it looks like they have received a cease and desist, and I thought we would go over this cease and desist here. To whom it may concern, we've recently become aware that your product or service, Invidious, which is being offered at Invidious.io, your client appears to be in violation of YouTube API services, terms of service, and developer policies. API client terms of use and privacy policies. Policy. API clients must display a link to YouTube's terms of service, and they also must state in their own terms of use that by using those API clients, users are agreeing to be bound by YouTube terms of service. Each API client must require the users to agree to a privacy policy before users can access the API client features and functionality. The privacy policy must A, be prominently displayed and easily accessible to users at all times. B, notify users that the API client uses YouTube API services. C, reference and link the Google privacy policy. Here's the funny thing. They start out the cease and desist talking about all this privacy stuff when the ir irony is that Invidious exists as a tool to retain your privacy away from from a company whose website is filled with trackers that the clients of this particular product don't want on their computer. E, clearly and comprehensively explain how the API client uses, processes, and shares the user information described in that section, including how the information is shared with either internal or external parties. They're not sharing anything. That's why they don't have that there. C, implementing YouTube features. Policy, API clients must also comply with requirements for minimum functionality for YouTube API services. In addition, API clients must not place any limitations in the YouTube functionality required by the RMF. Handling YouTube data and content. Policy, you and your API clients must not and must not encourage, enable, or require others to download, import, backup, cache, or store copies of YouTube audiovisual content without YouTube's prior written approval. B, make content available for offline playback, or C, use any aspect of the YouTube API services to facilitate or promote copyright infringement or the exploitation of copyright infringing materials. Now, I would understand if they said, you cannot make content available for offline playback, but I paid you guys $10 a month to make content available for offline playback and you still didn't do it, so now I don't give a fuck if I'm breaking your terms of service anymore. And it, yeah. In 2023, it is very, very weird to see companies that seemingly have as much self-awareness as Hillary Rosen in 2002. And one of the things that I find interesting here uh, is that they are not using YouTube's API. So as NVIDIA says on their GitHub, they don't understand that we never agreed to any of their terms of service policies. They don't understand that we don't use their API. They don't use their API. YouTube 
doesn't care. The person who wrote this legal complaint obviously has no technical knowledge, probably has technical knowledge on the level of whoever it was that wrote Abbott's FDA recall, which says, listen, you can't expect that we actually made a USB compliant device, right? Like I know it has a USB port on it and I know it comes with a USB charger, but you can't use any other charger with it or else it's gonna explode. Obviously this is user error. The person who wrote this is obviously clueless. So Nvidia says, what now? Things will continue normally until they can't anymore. Assume it's just the start. Assume they'll ask GitHub to take down the repos. If so, go to our Gitia. Assume the team won't be able to work on Nvidia's. You know what you have to do. May Invidious live and prosper, with or without us. P.S. We won't do anything unless we have to. P.S. 2. If we are forced to quit, any funds remaining will go to Fromisoft and maybe some other organization working on free, open source software, slash privacy. And I wish them the best of luck. Again, I don't like being made to feel like a simp. And when a company that I've been paying for seven years makes me feel like a simp, I stop caring about the rules. Can I be honest? When you stop caring about the rules, so do I. When you stop caring about fairness, so do I. So one of the things that I'm really excited about is at the company that I currently work for, I had the ability to hire two full-time software developers to work on something like this on a project. Kind of threw a little bit of bait out there last October to see if anybody was interested in YouTube. And two people actually emailed that were perfect for the job. So we are developing something in-house that I'm going to be very excited to show you very soon when it launches, which allows the viewer to have an experience where they can use numerous different viewing platforms within one application, where the viewing experience will be better than the stock op for most of these applications. You can download video, you can watch without having ads, you can watch without having trackers, you can deal with multiple different comment sections if you want. If a creator is banned from one platform, you'll still see them in the app. So let's say that you were using Twitch and you had the Twitch app and you were watching Destiny and Destiny gets banned. Now what you have to do is you have to migrate over to a new app to see him. You have to go to the YouTube app. But what if when you subscribe to Destiny on Twitch, what if you had an application that worked with Twitch, YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble, PeerTube, everything within one application. And that subscription that you made to Destiny followed him across platforms. So the moment that he was banned, you could continue watching him in your subscription feed as if he had literally never disappeared, in spite of the fact that he's now on another platform. Isn't that cool? Because there's a cost of switching. The cost of switching is that you have to get a new app, new platform, everything else. What if it was all in one app? But more importantly, what if that app offered you a better experience with greater privacy, with greater control than the actual stock app? So there was an incentive structure to use this app instead of that one. Now, I know what you must be thinking. Wow, if that app comes out, it's going to get taken down immediately. I wonder who would have the legal budget to be able to deal with that. I think he does. I have a feeling he's going to have the same smirk on his face when Google sends him a legal notice that I did when Apple asked me to take down my videos that showed me fixing a motherboard with a schematic. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be absolute fun. I can't wait to show this app to all of you. It is going to be beautiful, and it's going to be completely open source for anybody who wants to contribute, make improvements, do anything like that. I'm excited. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you excited to see NVIDIAs say, screw you? Or do you think that they are just begging to be steamrolled, sued, and destroyed as a result of this? And listen, viewers, you'd better not be making copies of the NVIDIAs repo. If you make copies of that repo, if you make your own instances for people to be able to use it after YouTube sent that cease and desist, I will personally be very mad at you. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now, and stay tuned for some cool software that we're going to be coming out with in the next few months. It's going to be fun.